It threatens the lives of more young women than cancer. It affects one in three women worldwide. It leaves women mentally scarred for life. It is violence against women and girls. According to the UN, this brutality is on the rise. Our series comes from the front line of the hidden war on women and girls. The field of conflict is just as likely to be the home as the brothel. This time on Women on the Frontline, we're in Colombia to find out if there is hope for an end to violence against the women of this country, where a culture of fear, conflict and machismo still prevails. A su vez, existen casos de violencia sexual, actos sexuales abusivos, accesos carnales y delitos sexuales en general. Como juez, he tenido que procesar a estos delincuentes. Gracias. It's London, May 2008, and Judge Esperanza González from Bolívar, a small town in Colombia, has come to Europe for the first time. She is sharing a platform with another judge, Cherie Blair, the wife of Britain's former Prime Minister. Thank you. I'm very humbled to be here tonight and to share a platform with two very strong, very competent women judges. Who They're here to mark the publication of an international report on the plight of girls and women in conflict. For the Colombian municipal judge, this is a universe away from her small town in the middle of one of the country's most violent regions. This is Bolivar, Judge Esperanza's town. It looks peaceful enough, but it hasn't always been this way. Colombia is home to the world's longest-running civil war, a conflict in which illegal drugs are the fuel. And women are not spared, with one woman a day dying because of the violence. The murder rate in Bolivar and the surrounding region peaked in the 1990s, but has fallen away dramatically with the drive to end the fighting. Nosotros teníamos tasas de 300, 350, y ahorita estamos en tasas de 27, 28% como país. But that is still five times higher than in nearby Costa Rica. The people in the mid-Magdalena region live with the legacy of a time when they had the highest homicide rate in the world. Civil conflict everywhere retards the development of civil society and the status of women. Colombia is no place to be a girl. If you are a girl, you have a less than 50% chance of receiving a secondary education and run a one in five chance of becoming pregnant while still a teenager. Mid Magdalena is Colombia's machismo wild west. But there's a stirring of change in the municipality of Bolivar, and that's why Women on the Front Line has come here. We were to find that everyone agrees it's Judge Esperanza who is spearheading the change. Our woman on the front line is 48-year-old mother of two, Esperanza Gonzalez. In her 20s, she was made a judge in Bolivar. In this program, we follow her on what she says is her personal mission to bring justice for young women and girls in and out of her courtroom. When I came here, pues ya había pasado un tiempo de, de, de mi desarrollo y yo traía cosas nuevas para hablarles sobre todo a las mujeres de que respetaran sus derechos, de que se hicieran respetar en su trabajo, en su casa, pero aquí no se podía hablar de eso. Aquí todo era la escondida, todo era pecado. Judge González is determined to confront what she describes as Colombia's conspiracy of silence that surrounds the issues of sexual abuse, domestic violence and teenage pregnancy. 
las menores eh, de edad en el campo eh, eran abusadas sexualmente por sus papás, por sus tíos, por sus hermanos, por sus vecinos, pero como eso era callado, no habían estadísticas de denuncia en el juzgado. The judge hears all kinds of cases in her courtroom. Today she is hearing a case where a father is accusing a farmhand of sexually abusing his two daughters aged 8 and 13. Judge Esperanza moved to Bolivar 20 years ago with her biology teacher husband, now headmaster of the town's main high school. In 1986, the judge's husband, whose master's degree was in sexual and reproductive health, persuaded her to attend a sexual health workshop with other local experts. It was to be a turning point for Judge González. She was given a list of options and was asked which she would choose if she discovered one of her sons was being taught by a homosexual. Entonces yo le coloqué otro ítem, ítem octavo, lo hago votar de la Secretaría de Educación. Y nunca había, me había sentido tan mal, nunca me había sentido tan, tan así chiquitica, porque pues estaban los doctores especializados en esa cuestión. Y entonces me preguntaron que siendo yo una juez municipal, que siendo abogada con especializaciones y con todos los juguetes, ¿cómo pensaba yo así? Entonces eh, allá me dieron cátedra, me dieron sopa y seco, me hicieron sentir mal y cambié, empecé, porque yo no voy a decir que eso fue el solo día, empecé a cambiar. Part of her personal journey was finding out via her husband, Luis Antonio Figueroa, that teenage pregnancies had reached very high levels in his school of 600 pupils. In Colombia, access to contraception is limited and abortion allowed only in extreme circumstances. Yo pienso que uno de los problemas mayores aquí a nivel de nuestro municipio es la misma unidad familiar. Ahí el papá, la mamá es poco expresiva afectivamente con sus hijos y también mucha violencia intrafamiliar y falta también mucha eh, acompañamiento de los papás a sus hijos por la falta de cultura sexual en muchos papás. Aquí el nivel cultural eh, es bastante bajo en los padres de familia. Another legacy of the conflict that increases the risks to girls is the scattering of families. Incredibly, according to the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, there are more displaced people in Colombia than any other country in the world apart from Rwanda. El conflicto El desplazamiento es un factor de riesgo. De hecho, dos de cada, de, dos de cada tres mujeres adolescentes menores de 18 años quedan embarazadas cuando son desplazadas. Esperanza González believes that the decades of violence have helped keep regions such as Mid Magdalena in ignorance about sex and all the dangers it poses to young girls. It is still, paradoxically, a prudish society. As they were to find out one parent's evening during the screening of an educational video on adolescent behavior. Y los padres de familia cuando hablamos de la palabra sexo se pusieron la cara así y se taparon la, los, los, la cara. Y cuando empezó a, el video entonces colocaban así y abrían el, el, un dedo acá para, para mirar el video. Y salimos de la reunión y nos dijeron que nosotros estábamos pervirtiendo. Esa fue la expresión que tanto mi esposo y yo estábamos pervirtiendo.